channel about cross stitch. Today is the 28th of August and yeah my last video what are we on? Floss tube 11 I think. So my last video was mid-August update so this is for the last couple of weeks of August um, and yeah I'm a little bit early it's a bank holiday Monday here in the UK and my children went for a sleepover with their grandparents last night so I have a morning of peace and quiet so I thought this would be the perfect opportunity just to to get things filmed so I'm missing out on a couple of days of um, August stitchy progress but we'll we'll have another video in the middle of September so you'll be caught up so I have to show you today one start, one finish, three whips, I think, a few acquisitions, and I have a giveaway to do today as well. So make sure you stick around for that. It's a pretty grey day here in Preston. Um, typical bank holiday Monday weather. If you are, if you're British, you know, you know. Um, hopefully everything shows up relatively well. Um, we had big, big plans for the children being away and we were going to go out and do some things in the garden. And it's just, it's just miserable. But there we go. The perks of being a Brit on a bank holiday. Let's get into it. My new starts. So I... I was watching Jess and Ryan cross stitching smiles. I was watching their latest floss tube, and Jess was talking about her plans for the new long dog sampler. She knew she was going to stitch it. She didn't know anything about it, what it looked like, any stitch counts or anything like that. But she was going to stitch it, and she was just so enthusiastic. I was like, "That's that's lovely," and I I'm, I'm kind of tempted. And then I was, as you do, scrolling through Instagram and Stitch Ecology, Rachel, um, posted that she was starting it. Does anyone want to do a, a start along and have there was a, there was a group chat and all that kind of stuff. And I, I sent a message. I was like, let me see. Let me see if I've got any fabric that I can fit it on because it is a beast. And if I do, then yeah okay I'm in and that was that so I'm blaming those two for my lack of willpower I was doing so well until like two days ago for having no new starts to show, show you in this video um so it's all their fault <laughs> they've both completely denied any responsibility already but it is worth a try here it is this is Saga by Long Dark Sampler Blah, blah, blah. long dog samplers it is 389 by 504 stitch count so it is once it's loaded into pattern keeper it's i think just shy of 104,000 stitches it's a bap it's a big ass project so i just I do love long, long dog samplers for for all of their for their patterns, but one of my favourite things in this I've already posted about it on on Instagram is just here. We have the snake and the apple. That's the Garden of Eden, and there you've got A and S because it's Adam and Steve. Adam and Steve in the Garden of Eden. I don't know if you've ever seen those people protesting at sort of when gay marriage was made legal and all that kind of stuff. It's Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. It's Adam and Steve, okay? And I I want to keep it because I love, that's like, there's there's alternatives. There's Adam, there's Adam and Eve, Adam and Steve, and Alice and Eve. And 
I want to I want to change it over to Adam and Eve and then put mine and my husband's initials in it. Um, but also I can't, I kind of want to keep Adam and Steve. I love it. So yeah, so many things. I can imagine stitching this up and just finding the odd little, oh my God, it's a bumblebee or whatever. It's a pelican with a frog in its mouth, you know? So I am really looking forward to getting some of those out. I'm stitching that on a piece of 28 count Joblin Ice Dyed by Banana Oil Fabrics. One over one full cross in CXC. So here's my fabric and um, yeah, it's coming out pretty true actually. Here is my little teeny weeny itsy bitsy start. So have I bought, pause for one second, I'm going to go grab the, the floss, that's the word, okay, it should have been more prepared. So as you can see on here, there are sort of five rows of archways, so for each of the five rows, I'm going to do all of the, um, the arches and the borders in black, 310. My trusty CXC, 310. I have like 3,000, 3,000? 3, 300 skeins of it, so I'm not gonna run out of that. Um, and then, is it Justine Stitching? One of the ladies in the group chat showed a gradient that she's doing for theirs and I thought that's beautiful I think I need to do the same so I've used ever so slightly different colors but the idea is pretty much exactly stolen shamelessly stolen from them so thank you very much um starting from the lightest to the darkest in these beautiful shades of blue so top archway in three three two five and then three seven five five three two two three twelve and three three six so those are going to be my sort of details in between the archways so this great big hippopotamus is going to be and it, it kind of picks out on the they're ever so slight and subtle blues in this fabric so you can see I've got the lightest one in there and it's showing up beautifully up against the pink not so great on camera but you can you can definitely see it in person and I got 0.3 percent of the way through on this. It's about 300 or so stitches. So yeah. All of that to say, one new start. Love this fabric. Right. Just gonna start flinging through this now. Okay, that was my new start. Next is my finish. So I've been working on the Advent Animals by Brooks Books. This one was Peter Polar Bear. I had already finished number one, which was Katie Kitty. And here he is. So I'm stitching these in DMC on 16 count Zweigart Ada in the color light blue. And just all exactly as charted. So I've done all of the outlines across two pieces of fabric for to do all 25. So one, once they're done, I'll cut them up, interface them, and then 
I'm going to turn them into an advent calendar. Hopefully my sewing skills will have improved significantly by then. I'll, I'll have had plenty of practice so that I can do that. And I'd said on my last video that what I wanted to do was do an animal a month. So I am on track <laughs> one month in um, of doing that. So I will definitely be picking this up again, hopefully early in September to start on, I think it's Mary Mouse. Okay, and then we're on to whips. So I've only had three works in progress over the past two weeks. So including the new start and the finish, I've only worked on five projects over the course of two weeks. And that is not like me. I, I sometimes pick up more than one project a day. Um, I just, I, I really do stitch what I want when I want and for some reason, over the past couple of weeks, I was just, whatever I picked up, I just wanted to keep stitching on. So, so I did. Um, the first one is embarrassingly close to a finish. I probably should have put another half hour, 45 minutes into it and just finished it and had two finishes, but I don't know why I didn't. This is a freebie from Silver Creek Samplers. It's on their, on their website. Do everything in love and the only thing I have left to do is in this colour here maybe three or four parts and that's it and then it's complete. This is being stitched on a 40 count um, even weave by Coffee Craft Fabrics. It's not showing up very well it's washing out um, but it's like a a very pale lilac-y, oh that's over there, um, very pale lilac-y colour um, with CXC and it's just really cute and I, I will, I will get that finished in no time, I just, I mean I still, I still have the needle loaded with it, I, I could just pick it up and just get going but never mind nearly a finish do everything in love and then the next one that i picked up and i worked on this for about five days straight which is i never do that i never do that this is summer holiday by soda stitch i i kind of jumped on the bandwagon of jordan tattooed stitcher and burn burn stitches with bernadette who both started this pattern as part of their little sort of soda stitch uh, sleepover slumber party that they did, um, and I kind of like gate crashed it and just said that I'm 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 doing it too. Let me I'm I'm in. <laughs> so um, I think Bernadette started up top with the duck, and Jordan started in the middle. And I've started down the bottom. So between the three of us, we've almost got the full picture. Last time you saw this, there was just some water, just a little bit of a couple of colours of blue on blue. And I just, like I say, I couldn't put it down. I really enjoyed working on it. And I thought, what I want to do is I want to get that beach ball in. I'm going to get it, the beach ball in and backstitched. But if I picked up a colour, I would then finish it off. So we've got the girl's swimsuit in there. So, yeah, it's just looking so cute. I'm doing this again on another piece of 40 count even weave from Coffee Craft Fabric in a, again, washed out go okay, that's a bit closer um it's it's like a, a blue which really does help make it look like they're in the pool but the needle winder is also coffee craft fabric I, I got that in a it's like a Dubai stash builder bundle so it came with needle minders it came with 
a few pieces of fabric in my chosen count, which I chose 40 count, even weave, and some charms and ring pulls and there was something else in it and I can't remember what it was. It'll come to me. Okay, and then the last one that I've been stitching is it lives in my Turtle Bay Stitches project bag with <laughs> turn around a little skeleton there. Look, <laughs> um, my Stitchy for Witchy, or one of my Stitchy for Witchy patterns. Nightmare Before Coffee. This is on another piece of coffee craft fabric. This is a 32 count even weave, no linen. And this is a little murky. Ooh, yeah, that's showing up really well. Murky grey. So last time you saw it, there was sort of two thirds of those what looked like caramel ghosties at the top. So I've I've done chunk of this. I'm about 35% of the way through this one. And that's that. And that's it. That's it for stitching this past couple of weeks. I've just picked things up and just kept stitching. Normally I'll finish a thread and then I will either pick a different colour because I, I tend not to stitch in big blocks of the same colour over and over again. Or I'll, I'll switch patterns, or I'll put it down and and do something else. So this was a this was an unusual couple of weeks for me to get so much progress on so few projects. Next up, I've got a bit of haul um, or acquisitions. I don't think there's going to be very much of this going forward, just to rein it in a little bit, I suppose. Um, but I have a few things. Anything that I have stitched or shown or about to show, I will link in the box below. So I went on the Hobby Jobby website, <coughs> excuse me, after seeing these all over Bernadette. Burn Stitches uses these, Lauren of Cross Stitch Bunny uses these. And I received one in um, a retreat bag from the last retreat I went to. At least I think it was a real one. Um, and that's Nerd Hoops. So I went on to Hobby Jobby and I bought the four pack. So you've seen the largest one, the number four, was on my long dog sampler. So the number two and three. I don't know where number one is. I think it must still be on... On a project but it's the perfect size to fit around my sort of ad advent animals um, so number four is a little bit big for where I'm working in the top corner so trying to kind of get through but I'm really loving them <clears throat> so yeah I bought the four pack in purple you can buy them individually you can buy them in different colors pink I think beige blue all sorts of different colors and I'm really enjoying stitching with them. So that's, that's purchase number one. I'm in the patchwork rabbit. For some reason that just didn't sound right, but it is. It's patchwork rabbit, fiber on OM fabric club. I get a fat eighth of a 32 count linen. And this month's was a cut of cappuccino. It is washing it out a little bit, but you can see the sort of grimy brown splodges throughout it. I really like that. Um, and I have a project that I'm going to stitch on that, so that is going straight from its bag, from my floss tube box, into a project bag with a pattern ready to be kitted up. I also, I shouldn't, I should never look at the, the, the Etsy shop ever, but I was looking at Canny Little Fox, her Etsy shop, 
and there was a canny little travel case in the most beautiful fabric so I got it and honestly beautiful but it is it is so cheap <laughs> for what it is that if you see one get one because someday she is going to come to her senses and raise her prices <clears throat> My canny little travel case and beautiful sort of stag pattern, a bit Christmassy. And in here I've got my, this is a working pet, there it is. Frosty Forest, Snowy Reindeer. Fits my working pet, uh, working copy, folded in half in there. <clears throat> my whip and all of the threads and my button that goes on it so yeah that is my now going to be my travel project in its little travel case um let's see what else have I got in here so oh I've got square there it is I went charity shopping I've been I must have gone to about nine or ten different charity shops around the South Preston area um, mostly in I'm going on a Hindu there is or a bachelorette party and there is a fancy dress component so I was sort of scouring the charity shops to see if I could find anything to go with that save myself some money um, and I wasn't very successful with that but while I was there I thought I'm gonna have a really good search for any cross stitch bits see if I can find anything and there was nothing either people around here are still stitching and not like relinquishing control of their cross which is fine I'm that is that is the preferred <laughs> scenario. Um, or there's just a load of cross stitches around here that are snagging all of the good stuff before I find it. Who knows? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to do it more regularly. It's, it's normally sort of a one-off occasion that I'll pop into a charity shop. Which, if you're not from the UK, I don't know if they are everywhere. I kind of liken it to what Goodwill is or thrifting in the US. Um, but you know, charities such as um, Aid UK, Mind, Bernardo's, the children's charity, and um, those are the kinds of places that, of the shops that I went to. So I did manage to pick up a couple of things, but there was really not a lot to choose from. Um, I, the first thing I picked up, which almost made me give up entirely, um, this is what I picked up from the first one, Art Nouveau Lady with Birds from the Craft Collection. And this was what was at the back. And I thought, okay, cool. Looks like a full kit. However, it's not. Um, there is no fabric, which is fine because I can, I can fill in fabric myself. Um, it looks like someone had already stitched the kit, passed it on, and someone else had started to kit it up because it's full of DMC pieces, but quite old DMC, so I don't know about colour matching. Um, but they've they've written on it the colour and the symbol um, for the pattern. Also in here is an adorable little cross-stitched needle book. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take all of the pins and the needles out and give it a nice little wash, um, and then I'm gonna stick that in one of my project bags and 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 start using that because that's adorable. Um, but yeah, just sort of ziplock bag, pawn ziplock bag of DMC that's been colour matched, and then inside. Board and 
magnetic ruler with sort of the counts on it. So if I can find a way to mount that, that will be going on my Lowry stand. That was completely a surprise because I, I it was in between the pages of the pattern. And then I went to look at the pattern and there's a page missing. I, I only have the top half, the bottom half of the pattern is missing. So I don't know if I'm going to bother, to be honest with you. I've got a few a few part skins, skins of DMC and a magnetic board out of it. I mean, I'm not going to get rid of it. I could eventually maybe stitch her head, but that was the first thing cross stitch wise I'd ever bought from a charity shop and that was a bit of an eye opener that don't just grab it. <laughs> have, a, have a good look at what you're actually picking up because I just, I just assumed and I shouldn't have, I should have looked more closely. Okay, so having learned that lesson, um, the only other things I managed to get from the charity shop were um, a little piece, or say a little piece, a length of brick rack, for 50p, and this, this is Cross My Heart, The Ocean, and it is a book of patterns of sea creatures and this this is from 1992 so it is I mean it's not quite but it's nearly as old as I am and I'm trying to see if I can find there it is the middle page which has some more pictures it's not in perfect condition. It has definitely been used, but it's not been it's not been coloured in or anything like that. But one of my one of the things that I find incredible about books like these is let me see if I can find one that's not showing you a significant piece of pattern if I do it. All of those are hand drawn symbols. The back stitch is hand drawn on. The symbols are all hand drawn. Mind blowing that that's what people had to do to, to put their patterns onto paper. It's just it's just amazing. So yes, a book full of hand drawn patterns for I mean, including a full coverage lighthouse piece. I mean, the patience. So, love, love the clownfish will probably be the first thing that I stitch out of this. Very cute. Okay, that's it for purchases. The only other thing that I did was I, having received my canny little travel pouch, I was like, I think, I think I want to try and make something like that. So. I have made before, following Elizabeth Ankin Stitches tutorial, a project sort of folder. I don't have it here to show you. A project folder. And I love it. I still use it, but it took me forever. Um, and part of the, the thing that re I really struggled with was the binding. And with canny little fox one I noticed that the binding is all sort of the self binding similar to the project bag tutorial that um, Elizabeth Duncan stitched I was like oh maybe maybe if I try and do that now bear in mind this with all of the um, with the pockets and the pockets and the pockets and the, the felt and all that kind of stuff I don't have all of that hardware and stuff I don't particularly want to go and buy it. I don't have enough scissors for to be putting a pair in every single pouch that I have for every single project. So 
I've kind of done a simplified version of it. It is, don't worry, Emma, I'm not coming for your customers because there is no way I'm going to be doing this in any sort of <laughs> regular fashion. Um, but I decided to make myself another Christmas one. So, I mean, you can see it's, it's a lot flimsier. <laughs> flimsier I haven't made the elastic long enough um so yeah I made myself some I got a bundle of fat quarters uh Christmas fat quarters at Hobbycraft a couple of months ago and they were 50p for a fat quarter bundle to sort of clear their stock so I picked them up I have a bunch of fat quarters of Christmas fabric and they these came this came together with three fat quarters, one of each pattern. Amazing. I mean, <laughs> um, but this is what I've got. So I am so impressed with myself. Can I just say that I have blown my own mind? <laughs> I've, um, I've got the, not the, a pocket and then the vinyl zip pocket and then two vinyl pockets there and then a little flap of felt because that's what I had in my stash just lying in there um just a, a scrap of felt so that's what I'm going to use I don't know I haven't decided what I'm going to put into it it's a little bit on the flimsy side because I didn't have the right sort of interfacing I suppose but this took me probably four hours in total, including cutting out all of the pieces and figuring out what sizes I wanted. I, I have to say, I did pinch the dimensions of, of the um, candy little travel case to make mine. Um, but I also purchased, so I followed Elizabeth Ann Can Stitches tutorial. I've got, I've done Kari of Tiger Lily Designs. I purchased the um, pattern for her project pouch and I just kind of merged them all into one. I'm only doing this for my personal use. I will not be selling it. I will not be creating a pattern out of it. I, nothing. Honestly, for this £23, go and buy this. this. This is what you want to do. But in terms of gaining a bit of confidence with using my sewing machine uh, this is uh, that's why I'm I'm making these and look how cute it is ah, I'm so proud of myself so here we go I made that I made a thing and hopefully once it's got a pattern in it it'll stop being so pathetic <laughs> next up is the big one I have a giveaway so I showed you, I think it was my last video, that I'd had a delivery from Banana Oil Fabrics. The fabric that I'm using on my long dog is from that delivery. And in that delivery, Christy gave me more pieces of fabric to either keep or give away. And I have selected a couple that I'm going to give away. And I'm going to give them away separately. So the giveaway for this video is for a piece of one of a kind 14 count Ada. 17 and a half inches by 29 inches from Banana Oil Fabrics, Christy. This is what I'm giving away this week. So, in honour of Jenny, Silver Bunny Stitches, who said that this looks like dragon scales, if you would like to win this, I would like you to use the word dragon in a comment down below. Now, T's and C's, and I've been terrible at doing these so far, so bear with me. Please be 18 or over to give me your address. Please do not use the words win, giveaway, prize, anything like that in your comment so that we don't get the people scouring the internet for freebies um, coming in and commenting. Because this has made its way from the USA, my last two giveaway winners 
both have been US based and I'm fine with that and happy with that I love I love that people across the world are watching it it blows my mind a little bit however because this has already come across the ocean I'm not sending it back so this I'm afraid is going to be a UK only giveaway possibly in the future um Christy has said that she'd be really happy to work with me to do giveaways in the US where she would post it directly to someone so possibly in the future in the meantime her Etsy is so full of one-of-a-kind fabrics but go and buy one because the shipping is going to be so much more you know what's the word that I'm thinking Well, that'll come to me in about two days reasonable reasonable shipping so much more reasonable within the US than it is the UK so I'm only going to go and send this UK only for this giveaway I'm very sorry but also let's not add any more miles to this fabric so yeah that is what you're entering to win use the word dragon I think I've hit all of the <sighs> going on here I think I've hit all of the, the terms and conditions I wanted to say. I'll put I'll put them on the screen if I think of any. <laughs> I I will get better with these giveaways. And that's that's it from me. I am very shortly, I think I'm gonna tidy all of this up and then I'm gonna film a kit um kit and kitted patterns parade. So all of the things that I have either as kits or that I have kitted up ready to start um, I'm gonna do a it should be a relatively small parade um, but I'm gonna that's what I'm gonna film next I'm probably I'm still probably gonna be wearing the same thing it could be a bit weird if I go and get changed with it being the same day but yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna film that next I don't know when I'll be get, getting them all edited and uploaded but keep an eye out for that as well use the word dragon and I will see you in a couple of weeks. Bye.